is a paid program presented by Jersey Sports Zone and RWJ Barnabas Hill. Coming up, the postseason is here and things always get turned up a notch. The GMC Soccer Finals at Piscataway High brought us drama and PKs on the boys' side and an epic shot that gave Monroe back-to-back -back girls' titles. The Prep B Championship saw Montclair Kimberly Academy show why they own a state ranking heading into the state playoffs. We always gonna get them when it count. You know why? Right, because we're resilient. The road to Rutgers is underway. Shabazz and Caldwell bring us championship level action in a wild game that went down to the very end. Plus, Southern Regional gets taken to the limit in their quest for a three-peat in the Shore Conference Volleyball Tournament Final. We pull out all the stops to bring you the best of New Jersey high school sports. A playoff edition of Jersey Sports Zone TV starts now. Welcome to another edition of Jersey Sports Zone TV, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health. I'm Rich Crampanis. We've got another great show for you as the postseason is here. The road to Rutgers is underway as the public school state playoffs kicked off this weekend in high school football. Jay Cook gets us started in North Jersey. Thanks, Rich. I'm Jay Cook with JerseySportsZone.com here in Essex County for the first round of the state football playoffs. An interesting matchup on hand tonight as number five seed Shabazz faces number four seed Caldwell. These two teams met earlier this season. Heck, it was just a few weeks ago that it was the Chiefs getting the best of the Bulldogs in a regular season matchup. It's Caldwell ball first, and they are in business early. Adam Seppi, the freshman QB, is slippery. Seppi breaks out of a sack and then fires to a wide open Nick Moyano. 22 yards here to cap off a nearly six minute drive. The Chiefs open with a seven nothing lead. Shabazz will answer back later in the first quarter. Romello tables, keeps it himself, and he's all alone. 44 yards on the QB keeper for tables. Shabazz is on the board. They trail 7-6 after one. Early second quarter, the Bulldogs are backed up to their own one yard line. Jalen Klein looks to give the offense some breathing room. Well, guess what? He's got running room. Klein is free and sprinting down the sideline. Sound the alarm, we've got a 99 yard touchdown. Unreal. Speedy Klein lives up to the nickname with an insane touchdown. The Chiefs have an immediate response. A long kick return sets up Adam Seppi's 10 yard touchdown pass to Sean Murtaugh. So we're all tied up. It's 22-22 at the halftime break. Third quarter, Shabazz goes back in front. Klein cannot be stopped. That's three touchdowns on Friday night for Jalen Klein. What a game he's having. It's now 30-22 after a successful two-point try. Early fourth, Caldwell is back to punt. The ball is sky high, and it then caroms off of Davion Porter and recovered by Michael Mignon. And then they cash in Adam Seppi to Sean Murtaugh from 11 yards out. But the Chiefs aren't coming off the field. They're going for two. And what's the play call? How about? Philly Philly, Murtaugh to Seppi for the game time conversion. And it's tied up 30 to 30 here. Now there's under five minutes to go and the Chiefs are taking out all the stops. Third and long, Nick Mignon with a Statue of Liberty. A 37 yard gain. The drive would stall, but the Chiefs come out with points. Matt Murtaugh hammers a 33 yard field goal with ease. Murtaugh comes up big to make it 33-30 with three minutes and 18 seconds left to go. 
So now it is Shabazz Ball, and watch out. Third and short. Romello tables to Davion Porter, and Porter does the rest. He's breaking tackles, and we've got a house call. Wow! Davion Porter puts the team on his back with a 55-yard touchdown to secure a first-round playoff win. Truly, what a fantastic game. 36-33 is your final. Shabazz will now advance to face Westwood in the North 1 Group 2 semifinals next week. You know, day by day, get better and better. 1% better every day. That's what Coach Nas preaches. And, you know, we, we follow behind him. And, you know, we got, we got, we got, you got to have his back. You know, he's going to have our back. So, you know, we got to come out here. We can't disappoint him. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't, dis we didn't disappoint today. We, we stayed calm. We, we, we knew what it was. it was. It was a moment for the whole team. We just had to get in that, get in that end zone and just win the game. We, we wasn't stressing. We just knew what we had to do. Just handle business. That's it. That's all. Time to take a break. When we come back, we've got an exciting week of championship soccer. The GMC finals give us a shootout in the boys' title game and a repeat for the Monroe Lady Falcons. All the highlights when Jersey Sports Zone TV continues. No one plans on heart disease, but everyone should have a plan for it. We help patients of all lifestyles and medical histories plan for healthy hearts. We offer convenient screenings without judgment, hundreds of preventive programs, and women's heart specialists. And we're the largest cardiac surgery program in New Jersey. Make plans for a healthy heart with RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. It's time for another blast from the past, brought to you by the Heldridge, New Brunswick's only four-star hotel. Hey everyone, I'm James Mooney. Alex Bauman scored a touchdown in Tulane's win against North Texas last week. Back in 2021, Rich Crampana saw Bauman lead Red Bank Catholic to a season opening win. The Caseys have so many weapons on offense. This is Rajon Cooper. We're going to slow it down. Watch Alex Bauman, number 14, get his man to the turf. And that springs open Cooper. Look at him go. The modern day prep transfer goes 50 yards down the sideline. And RBC's in business at the two. Brown goes to the air. And Alex Bauman is a matchup problem. Look at the tight end haul it in. He is one of the state's top recruits and shows why here at the half. Red Bay Catholic with a commanding 27 to nothing lead. Blast from the past is brought to you by the Heldrich, New Brunswick's only four star hotel and a preferred hotel of Rutgers football fans since 2005. The Heldrich helps you make the most of your game day weekend, providing premium accommodations in the cultural heart of downtown New Brunswick. Restaurants, bars, theaters, parks, museums, and more are only steps away. Whether you're traveling alone or with a large group, book your stay at the Heldrich and make the most of your game day weekend. for them we're here for you get back the life you love welcome back to the show coming up on monday the soccer state playoffs are underway but we did have championship soccer this week here at montclair kimberly academy it was the prep b title game montclair kimberly academy is the top seed in the prep b tournament it's mka hosting gill st bernard's who have 13 prep b championships in their rich history in the 10th minute Keeper Felipe Zumbato on the free kick. The header sails just over the bar. This is the best scoring chance of the first half. Through 40 minutes, there are zeros on the scoreboard in the prep B title game. Second half, MKA keeper Alex Provost is 60 yards out. He takes the free kick, and this ball is majestic. Braden Keegan takes it out of the air for a Cougars goal. Wow, that is worth taking a bow. That's fabulous execution. Keegan gets his eighth of the season. MKA has a weapon with Provost taking free kicks. Get this, it's the keeper's fifth assist of the season. That was a picture perfect ball and Keegan was money on the finish. 34-16 to go in the second half. The Cougars have a one nil lead. Montclair Kimberly gets a key insurance goal in the 64th. Gustavo Rosen feeds Dyke. 
He goes far post for another Cougars goal. The sophomore with his 10th of the year, that's tied for the team lead. MKA in front, 2-0. The Cougars back line was outstanding. Provost did not have a lot of action. He makes the save here as Montclair Kimberly Academy showed why they're ranked 19th in the latest state poll. 2 0 is your final. The Cougars are on top in Prep B, winning the championship in convincing fashion. We talked with the combination of Provost and Keegan, who were responsible for the first goal of the match that proved to be the game winner. I mean, I just stopped thinking, just guide the ball to the net, that's all I had to do. Ball went in right into me from Provost, a great ball from him. All I had to do was guide it home. In going to their field the last two years, and I mean, that ending de in defeat there, and then also in the States, I mean, this is sweet, but I mean, we just have to sight set on States now, so I mean, we're looking to hopefully getting them again on this field and uh, doing the same. The conference championship season is coming to a close in New Jersey. The GMC boys final at Piscataway High gives us a great finale with the state playoffs looming. St. Joe's Metuchen lost to South Brunswick 1-0 on opening day. The Falcons seek redemption. Meanwhile, the Vikings return to the final for a second straight year after losing in PKs to Monroe. Final seconds of the first half. Darian Wubbenhorst on the corner kick. Mason Atkins heads it in with authority. There's just nine ticks left on the clock. Great execution by the Falcons. Atkins picks the perfect time for his first goal of the year. At the half, St. Joe's Metuchen with a 1-0 lead. In the 63rd minute, South Brunswick on the corner. Aiden Chang on the service. Jason Kaiser heads it home. The Vikings have drawn level. That's Kaiser's first goal of the season. And we're going to overtime in the GMC Championship game. In double OT, the Vikings looking for a golden goal. Aiden Fung with the shot. It hits the woodwork. Oh, so close, but 100 minutes cannot decide a victor. We're going to PKs to settle the title. Last year, South Brunswick lost in the seventh round of Monroe. The Vikings hoping to flip the script. After a St. Joe's miss, Constantino Volano converts for the Vikings. South Brunswick out to a 2-0 lead in PKs early. After the Falcons convert, Troy Boucher answers the bell. He goes full extension for a spectacular save. Boucher's got St. Joe's Metuchen right back in it. Take another look as Boucher lays out to keep his team in the hunt for a GMC title. We move to round four. The Falcons' Zachary Dosh is able to find the net. We're now tied 3-3, heading into the fifth and final round. Boucher shines once again. Second stop for Troy Boucher. He's pumped up for good reason. He knows what's at stake. Boucher's save gives St. Joe's a chance to win it with one more successful PK. The Falcons turn to Noah Charnecki, and the sophomore clinches it for St. Joe's. For the first time since 2010, St. Joe's Metuchen is the GMC Boys Soccer Champion. 4-3 is your final in PKs. St. Joe's is 13-1-2 on a 15-game unbeaten streak, avenging their lone loss of the year. After the win, Jay Cook talked with Falcons keeper Troy Boucher, who exudes confidence on the pitch and in the post-match interview. We'll beat you any day, anywhere, anytime. And uh, let's just say this trophy's back where it belongs. So I'm glad to say that, glad to leave that impact on this program. The Monroe Falcons are back at the GMC Championship looking for a second straight title. It's Monroe taking on Old Bridge. The Knights split with Monroe in the regular season, handing him one of their two losses of the year. Angelina Roca from distance. This one hits the crossbar. So close, we take another look. At the half, we are scoreless. Monroe continued to create quality scoring chances. On the free kick, Old Bridge keeper Jessica Lane comes out to get a hand on it and then smothers the ball on the turf. Then Emma Burness from 29 yards out. Lane steers it over the bar. Jessica Lane with 14 saves for Old Bridge She's a big reason this match remains scoreless. In the 79th minute, overtime is looming. Furness feeds Sophia Gardner. She settles, makes a move, and lets it rip! What a shot by Sophia Gardner! Monroe finally breaks through! There's just 122 left on the clock, and the senior comes through with her 14th goal of the year. Take another look at this one. The Coastal Carolina commit shows why she's a D1 player. 
spear the Chanticleer. What a blast! And that's the difference as the Monroe Falcons repeat as GMC champions, and the celebration is on. 1-0 is your final. Monroe is now 14-2-1 on the season. There were tears of joy for Sophia Gardner as she talked about her game winner in the late stages. Honestly, it was just so refreshing because there were so many rips that were just going over and over and over, and just to finally getting in last minute, it was just... I've been waiting it for all four years of my high school career, so it's just the best feeling I could describe. Like, all four years, and this is my last year. It was like, I can't ask for anything more. Time to step away. When we come back, we put the spotlight on girls' volleyball. Southern Regional and St. John Vianney square off in the Shore Conference Championship. James Booney has the highlights from Lakewood. You're watching Jersey Sports Zone TV, presented by RWJ Barnabas Hell. You don't need to miss any of the action in New Jersey high school sports. Follow Jersey Sports Zone right now on our various social media pages or on our YouTube channel. You can even download our app for free today, available in the Apple and Google Play app stores. Fresh content is posted every single day on jerseysportzone.com. Don't miss any of the action as it comes from our cameras right to you. Jersey Sports Zone's Game Ball Spotlight is presented by RWJ Barnabas Health. JSE's Game Balls allow us to put one football player from the entire state into the spotlight for a remarkable performance. Now we pay a trip to Morristown where Philip Fulmore's five touchdown game helped Del Barton pull off a massive upset win over DePaul Catholic. Yeah, hey, Coach Bowers here. Uh... This is uh, Del Barton football on Tuesday after really a phenomenal game on Friday night. Uh, our do everything uh, football player number one, Philip Fulmar, uh, was awarded the Jersey Sports Zone Player of the Week, which is uh, honestly very, very well deserved. Philip, congratulations. Phil, a five touchdown game to beat a top 25 team in the country last week. How did you guys get it done, and how did you guys get this win? It was all about grit. Coach said, Quincy Hall, get home. That's what we did. We got home. Oh, yeah. Take, yeah. take me through the game plan. Why do you guys think you were successful with the way you guys executed and played out there? We just wanted it more honestly. The grit we had, the tenacity we had to go out there and finish the game was really well done by our guys. Who do you want to thank for the award? Because this, this is a great school community. I'm sure you had a lot of support. It's a hold up our own community. Thank you. Let's hear for him, guys! Yeah. Our game ball polls are now over for the fall season. Thanks to our entire audience for voting every Sunday on JerseySportsZone.com. Stay tuned for more game ball polls in the winter time. Welcome back to the show. I'm James Mooney. We're here at Georgian Court University for the Shore Conference Tournament Girls Volleyball Final. St. John Vianney takes on Southern Regional. The Lancers look to bring home their first SET title since 2021. Meanwhile, the Rams look to win their third straight Shore Conference title. Southern starts strong in the first. They set this one up for Jessica Smart and she hammers it by the SJV defense. Smart puts Southern in front 5-1 early. St. John Vianney gets on a run to close the gap. There's a battle at the net. And Taylor Sofal Kanich will not be denied. The junior was tremendous up front for SJV as the Lancers take an 8-7 lead. The Rams lead by two later in the first. Jessica Smart serving and she delivers an ace. One of Southern senior leaders helps the Rams win a back and forth first set, 25-22. Second set and it's another quick start for Southern. SJV setting things up, but that is blocked by the Southern front line. Jessica Smart and Heather Henderson teaming up there as the Rams take a 3-1 lead. But SJV would control things the rest of the set. Ayana Warren with the dig. And then Brianna Slattery slams it past Southern. A big kill from the senior as the Lancers are in front 16-11. St. John Vianney trying to extend the championship match when Gianna Pena drops one in for an ace. The Lancers bounce back with a 25-17 win. That sets up a winner-take-all third set. Southern with a three-point advantage in the third. The Rams stand tall at the net for a huge block. 
Leah Silva and Madeline Iorio in there as Southern is five points away from a championship. The Lancers are able to rally later in the set. Warren with a quick bump over the net and that will drop in. SJV has Southern on the ropes as they now lead 24-22. But Southern won't go away that easily. We're tied at 24 when Madeline Iorio comes up with a kill. The senior getting it done as the Rams are one point away from a title. Championship point now for Southern. And Leah Silva seals the deal with an ace. The Rams rally late in the third set and the celebration is on. Southern survives a thriller to win their third straight SCT championship. 2-1 is your final. Southern is now 24 and four on the season, winning their seventh SET title. St. John Vianney falls to 21 and four. We caught up with Leah Silva after the match. It was sweet, it was definitely stressful. Um, I was, it was sigh relief when I saw it happen. I was like, oh my God, thank God. But yeah, I knew we can pull through together as we all just stick together. In Lakewood, I'm James Mooney, JerseySportsZone.com. Time for one more break. We've got a playoff edition of JSE's Top 10 Plays. Find out who's got the top spot when we return. No one plans on heart disease, but everyone should have a plan for it. We help patients of all lifestyles and medical histories plan for healthy hearts. We offer convenient screenings without judgment hundreds of preventive programs and women's heart specialists and we're the largest cardiac surgery program in new jersey make plans for a healthy heart with rwj barnabas health let's be healthy together it's really nice to be in a situation in a place where there are very good people who take good care of people orthopedics is about it's not about saving lives it's about saving quality of life a lot of people, we live high stress lives, so if you tell someone they can't do something for whatever reason, that's pretty traumatic. I really take pride in trying to be empathetic and trying to put myself in every patient's shoes. I want to take care of people like I'd want to take care of my family, and I think that when you do that and give somebody that family feeling and give them your honest opinion for what you would do, they value that. Hey, welcome back to the show, everyone, for our final and favorite segment of the week on JSZ TV. Just a reminder, the New Jersey High School football playoffs began this weekend. Head over to JerseySportsZone.com right now and check out all of our football coverage from North, Central, and South Jersey. Will football take the top spot in this week's JSZ Top 10 Plays of the Week? Let's go ahead and find out right now. Number 10. Action from the start in this one. Opening kickoff of the game. OC's Colin Thompson fields it on the run, and he is off. The senior sprints to the near sideline, makes a man miss. Colin Thompson, 88 yards to the house to begin the night with a bang. 7 nothing Raiders. Number 9. Hillside gets a jolt to open the fourth. Kamari Robinson is loose down the far sideline. But he isn't done there as he breaks a few tackles and races in for a touchdown. The junior with a 71-yard run, and that is just what the Comets needed. Hillside trails 14-7 with 8.32 left in regulation. Number eight. After the Falcons convert, Troy Boucher answers the bell. He goes full extension for a spectacular save. Boucher's got St. Joe's but touching right back in it. Take another look as Boucher lays out to keep his team in the hunt for a GMC title. Number seven. Second half, MKA keeper Alex Provost is 60 yards out. He takes the free kick and this ball is majestic. Braden Keegan picks it out of the air for a Cougars goal. Wow, that is worth taking a bow. That's fabulous execution. Keegan gets his eighth of the season. MKA has a weapon with Provost taking free kicks. Get this, it's the keeper's fifth assist of the season. That was a picture perfect ball and Keegan was money on the finish. Number six. Nine seconds to go. Manchester Township trails West Deptford by two. Ian Spicer from 37 yards out. The snap's down and this kick is boomed. Plenty of distance and through the uprights. Ian Spicer makes history. What a moment in Ocean County. 
Manchester beats West Deptford 30 to 29 in the South Group 2 quarterfinal. For the first time in school history, the Hawks have won a state playoff football game. Number five. Early second quarter, the Bulldogs are backed up to their own one yard line. Jalen Klein looks to give the offense some breathing room. Well, guess what? He's got running room. Klein is free and sprinting down the sideline. Sound the alarm, we've got a 99 yard touchdown. Unreal. Speedy Klein lives up to the nickname with an insane touchdown. Shabazz now takes a 14-7 lead. Number four. Marlboro can win the game with a field goal or a touchdown. The Mustangs turn to Christian LaFonte. He beats one man, shins another tackle, and is headed for the zone. 15 yards. LaFonte's third touchdown is the game winner. LaFonte had just enough gas left in the tank in overtime to deliver a relentless run that has the Mustangs in the section semifinal for the third straight year. Number three. In the 79th minute, overtime is looming. Furness feeds Sophia Gartner. She settles, makes a move, and lets it rip! What a shot by Sophia Gartner! Monroe finally breaks through! There's just 1.22 left on the clock, and the senior comes through with her 14th goal of the year. Take another look at this one. The Coastal Carolina commit shows why she's a D1 player. Fear the shot clear. What a blast! Number two. Now it's first and 10 at the St. Joe's 40. Derek Zamet on the play action. He finds Dez Jones, and this is what we call a grown man touchdown. Dez Jones, are you for real? Jones sheds three tackles for the go ahead touchdown. DePaul makes it 28 21 with just 354 left in this game. And the number one play of the week. So now it is Shabazz ball and watch out, third and short. Romello tables to Davion Porter and Porter does the rest. He's breaking tackles and we've got a house call. Wow, Davion Porter puts the team on his back with a 55 yard touchdown. Shabazz is back in front with 152 to go. It's 36-33. My, how quickly things can change. For our team at Jersey Sports Hold, I'm Rich Crampanis. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. on WLNY-TV with more New Jersey High School Sports on Jersey Sports Zone TV. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. The proceeding is a paid program presented by Jersey Sports Zone and RWJ Barnabas Health.